How's it going? Today's problem, my brain hurts. I need to take a break from all these fancy schmancy technical projects. And I was thinking, I've been doing a whole lot of electronics work lately and, and I, I don't really have a spot to do this that makes it a lot easier. So it involves a lot of um, complex yoga positions. And on top of that, I'm always lurch right over the thing, inhaling every type of smoke that comes off of the project. So today, we're gonna make a solder station with a fume extractor and a third hand. I kinda wanna make it match the aesthetic of the Heiko that I have and fit it right in there. So we're kinda just gonna get creative on this thing. There's nothing too complex about any of the technical bits. So we're gonna spend a lot of time just trying to make nice round contours and all that good fun jazz. So let's do it. So for this thing to work as a third hand, it's gonna need a good heavy base. And the whole thing will be made out of steel. It'll be heavy regardless, but for the base, we're gonna use this piece of 12 gauge. Otherwise, I just kinda wanna use up a bunch of scrap I got laying around. But I have these fans that I can use for the fume extraction. And we gotta fit the bits of my Heiko and some sort of workstation. So I've taken a fan off of this thing to shorten it up a little bit and kind of arrange things where I think I want them. And I'm kind of liking where this is going. I've got these random pieces of scrap pipe that I can use to add curves where I want curves. I don't really know how to do this besides to just go for it. So we're just going to go for it. Man, I need a new blade for this. I want this to be pitched back a little bit and have it kind of like the entrance to a cave. I'll have it right there. So the way I'm going to get that pitch right, tack it, and I'll just mark it with the Sharpie just like this. I need a little bit of a block. Now I have right where I need to cut it to keep it at that pitch. Now what we need is a backing piece. Cover this back edge. I gotta start laying these things out to figure out how it's gonna work. So this goes right here. This guy will bridge the gap from top of pipe to the back of the plate. These pieces are gonna break off. Faux show. I think maybe just like that. And the nice thing about this is nothing has to be perfect because it's just ART. We can bend these up. Well, that sucks. Now I just gotta find some scrap to fill this gap. Hey, that rhymes. So I'm kind of thinking the best way I can get a semi-organic shape while filling these gaps in right, it's just gonna be a weld, cut, grind, weld, cut, grind kind of dealio. So here's a time lapse. Now, I want these two guys sitting in a recess of sorts. And I kind of like them angled in like this, which saves me from cutting into the corner here. So I've cut this sheet out of 16 gauge and I've roughly marked all the cuts I need to make on it. But first, I'm gonna weld this round stock around the edge so I can grind it down and give it more of an organic edge. Alright, we got a nice rounded edge on here now. Now we can cut all this out. Getting pretty sick of using a grinder. Okay, 
Got everything cut out. Now, just like I did around the edge, I'm gonna get some round stock into all these cutouts and grind it smooth. Starting to think this is the wrong medium. Maybe I'd be better off with modeling clay. Got the round stock cut and bent for this part. That's gonna fit pretty good. I'm thinking for these parts, there is no way for one that I will be able to bend that perfectly. And two, the parts already like barely fit as is. So I think I'm just gonna cut a strip of 16 gauge at a half inch and bend it around and weld it in that way. And it'll still look cool, because I'm still gonna grind down the edges. It'll be a whole lot easier that way. Got me a nice chunk of finger cutter here. I'm gonna start sticking it in here. Oh man, I just put my mask on and boom! Got a tablespoon of grinding dust down the back of my shirt. That is nasty. Got all my inserts done and now we grind. We got our two pieces. They fit together poorly, but good enough for me. Now we gotta cut a vent hole for in here, and we gotta cut something for the back as well. So, um, the plasma cutter didn't do that good of a job. I'll see if I can save this with a grinder, but we'll see. I think as you can tell by the gaps, the overhang, the fact that it's suspended, this is perfectly placed. Oh, as you can see here, I have left some hefty gaps to fill. Oh uh, yeah, ain't nothing to it but to do it. It, see, it seems we've landed back on the main theme of this channel. I'm dumb. So before I welded this base on, I was supposed to drill some holes and weld some nuts on the other side for these little miniature Doc Ock arms. But I didn't do that. So we gotta come up with a little solution here. So for the most part, this thing's done. We have some pretty unique contours in here. Now the last thing we gotta do, on the back here, I need to cut a hole so we can install all our electronics. Also to have a place for the air to come out. So we're gonna get that cut out on the plasma cutter. At the same time, I'm gonna cut a couple pieces here that I can weld a nut on the other side, drill a bigger hole in here, and stick them on there, which it'll just add more funky contours, so I'm cool with that. Got our parts cut out. These ones will be placed like so. Hold our little clampy bits. This one will cover the hole in the back. Which hole, you say? Hole. These guys are getting these beautiful blue nuts welded on the bottom. Like so. Alright, I think that just covers it. Now we can start installing the electronics. For the electronics, I have two fans and then this magnifying glass light thing that came with the rest of the clampy bits. And it looks like that I can control them all with this little four to 12 volt adjustable power supply. So we're gonna keep it simple here. Now then to install these fans, the only way we're gonna be able to achieve this is one at a time. Now the only way to keep these rigidly affixed. Beautiful. Now we gotta figure out where we're gonna mount this pot. I'm always a little embarrassed to use hot glue in a project, but here goes nothing. Oh man, I messed up the shot, I panicked. All right, I think that's as far as I wanna get on this before painting it. The last thing we need to do electronics wise is get the lamp installed, poke the cord through this hole and solder it onto this splitter. And that's it for the electronics. Easy peasy. So, I'll see you when this thing's done.
paint job ain't great. There's already some apprentice marks from the wrench, but you know what, man? I think it looks pretty good. Remind me to never buy oil paint again. That was just absolutely awful. So, let's give it a test. One final touch. These go to 11. It all seems to be working. Let's use up this trashy piece of prototype board. Turn that thing up to 11. I think it's working. That is nice. And now, the best part of all. Look at that, didn't even have to twist my wires. We did it, man. Did it works. Overall, I think it turned out looking pretty, pretty cool. Don't look at that. I need a smaller strain relief for the cord. I feel very professional regardless of the childish colors. I'm pretty happy with how this thing turned out. As for the video, I'm gonna do what I can to make it interesting in post because I kind of just shut down when I've been inhaling grinding dust for hours. <laughs> so I don't know how well that turned out. Either way, this thing's gonna help me out a lot. It was nice to do a nice kind of fun artsy project and we'll get back to the technical stuff soon either way appreciate you sticking around remember to ding the old dinger and ding the other stuff that goes on down there and thank you so much for watching